So now we're looking at a pretty healthy for an SEC game mm-hmm. and for two teams that had a fairly comparable record, seven and six, nine and four, eight points coming into Fayetteville. So how does that hit you right out of the gate on Monday? You know, Mark, I'll be honest, I'm surprised it wasn't more. A- after the way the Gamecocks looked on the offensive front, and I-, I know Arkansas looked very beatable, obviously, from people I talked to. I didn't get to watch a ton of their game on Saturday afternoon, admittedly, but uh, I-, I thought it was going to be double digits. I-, I thought it was going to be 11 or 12 points, to be honest with you. So just to hear it come out at eight is uh, – it- it's interesting. I, I mean, listen, I- I- I've looked at this game all preseason as a toss-up, and I still feel that way going into it. Um, if South Carolina can shore up the issues on the offensive line, they got a great chance to win this football game for sure. Um, I, I think you will not see many folks picking the Gamecocks this week. So the number, I, I wasn't stunned. I was a little bit surprised because I, you know, I was asked early Sunday, uh, you know, where would you project this line? And I, I said 10 or 11, admittedly, like I said. So, um, you know, we'll see. It's interesting. I, I think Vegas, when you look at that, I think Vegas, obviously, they have Arkansas, the home favorite. Understandable. That's that's what we all were expecting. We knew the Gamecocks would be a dog. But I, I think what it's also saying is Vegas does expect South Carolina to improve from week one to week two. And, and every football team, right? I mean, again, your greatest improvement comes between week one and week two. Any coach will tell you that. So we'll see if they can shore things up on the offensive side. I mean, that that is the greatest area of concern, Mark. And that's where – my frustration and a lot of others came because it's interesting, Mark, you know, there aren't many times I don't ever remember leaving a 21 point victory as frustrated as I was Saturday night. And I think again, whether fair or unfair, it's just simply because of the preseason expectations and the hype and, and everything surrounding this team with the additions of Rattler and Stogner and Wells and Christian Bill Smith and Corey Rucker. And the list just goes on and on and on. And to again, see some of the same issues or really just the same issue rear its ugly head, and I know we point to Spencer Rattler and the interceptions. You know, one of them really wasn't his fault. The ball was dropped by the receiver, and the other one, hey, he looks back at the film, and you can watch the play. He had the dump off right in front of him and said he went for the risky throw, and he paid for it. I'm not really worried about Spencer Rattler. Spencer Rattler will be fine, and it's, again, thanks to his ability, they were able to score the way they did. But uh, it just comes back to the offensive line. It's a line of scrimmage league. you got, you got a block to win. You've got weapons. You're not going to be able to get the most out of them. And you will, not, you will not see the true potential of this offense. You will not meet that true potential if you cannot block up front. So I think Vegas is expecting improvement. But I, I'll, be, I'll be honest with you, I was surprised to see that line open at single digits. But, you know, again, Vegas knows. So we'll see if they, uh, they nail it again this week. Chris Phillips joining us from uh, the Spurs Up Show and the Daily Crow. Join him right there. You see his Twitter handle as well. Uh, That's the destination for South Carolina and SEC football talk. Uh, Chris, I love the coaching matchup. I love what both of these coaches did with uh, shoot. You know what the deal is when you show up and it's a new job. You typically get a new job in college football because the other guy didn't do the job. So you got a dysfunctional roster. Sure, they both had a little bit of talent to work with, but considering what the deal is in the SEC, they both got thrown a roster, and they immediately just made the teams better, both of them. So two up-and-coming coaches in the SEC going at it. Yeah, both have done a really good job, and I think both are really good fits for their respective schools. I mean, obviously what Sam Pittman has done, and, you know, he, he's such a likable guy. I mean, you heard the post-game interview over the weekend where he's like, you know, I think I'm going to go have me a cold beer. It's just like, how can you not like a guy like that? And he's such a good fit for Arkansas and what they want to do. And then obviously Shane Beamer at South Carolina, the culture he's built and all the the positive energy and positive momentum. So it really is two up-and-comers, two rising programs, two rising stars in the coaching ranks, I would say. Um, And this is a big game. I mean, listen, a lot of fans labeled this game on the South Carolina side as the biggest game of this season. And many folks, whether fair or unfair, their hopes of this season are hinging on what happens Saturday in Fayetteville. Now, again, I would go and caution folks, hey, win or lose, it doesn't guarantee one way or the other which direction your season's going to go. But it would be massive for South Carolina, you know, a team that last year struggled so mightily on the road and – and, uh, you know, it, it would be huge. There's no other way to put it. It would be huge. And especially after week one where you got sort of mixed feelings, um, you're going to have to play a good football game and, and, and play like a sound football team to go beat Arkansas at their place. You're just going to have to. So um, we will continue to learn a lot about this Gamecocks football team. But, again, two great coaches, and I think two coaches that will have a lot of success at their respective programs. But, uh, you know, it's, it, it's a big game for both schools. Both programs feel like they're on the up and up and on the rise. And, and winning a game like this, only helps to further that cause.
So, Chris, when you take into consideration the eight points and you think about there's one team in in uh, Arkansas who was hit with a sledgehammer. Cincinnati came off the bus hitting, man. That mm-hmm. team is fast and furious. That was a tough, tough game. Not saying that South Carolina had a breeze or put it in cruise control because they had a tough matchup. Uh, but, you know, there was a, a certainly a diff, uh, different levels of uh, – adversity there in the first game do you think that favors one team or the other one's battle tested more uh one had a little bit less of a a deal to work with in uh week one yeah i mean you know i guess quality of opponent right does arkansas feel like they know a little bit more about their football team than south carolina because they played a cincinnati and kind of played a georgia state I, i mean maybe that helps but uh you know obviously it's a different animal for both sides when it's your first game in sec play and of course this is the sec opener for both so um, I think both teams will learn a lot about themselves. It's just a different animal, right? South Carolina may not be one of the elites or one of the one of the top teams in the conference, but it's it's still just a different level of competition, right? I mean, we saw we saw what the SEC did over the weekend, and if LSU could have just somehow made an extra point and gone gone and won in overtime, you know, the SEC would have went undefeated. So, um, you know, maybe you give the advantage there to Arkansas, but I, I wouldn't put a lot of stock in that. I, I just think that. Uh, this is one, <clears throat> like I said, we'll learn a lot about both sides. And, again, how much improvement is made from week one to week two? That's the big question I have, and I think that's what's going to go a long way to determine this football game. And I think the more the mystery is South Carolina, right? I, th- I think Arkansas feels confident after the year they had last year, K.J. Jefferson at quarterback. Um, you know, they do have question marks, sure, but they feel confident in what they've got on their football team. It's South Carolina who I look at and say, well, what are you? You know, what are you going to be this year? Is this going to be another fringe fighting to get to six wins? Or, again, are you going to show improvement and show, hey, the the track to winning eight, maybe even possibly nine, overachieving and maybe doing sort of like what Arkansas did last year, it's still a very real possibility. So, I mean, that's the fun in it, Mark, right? It's a week-to-week game. We all know, hey, we're sitting here on this Monday. Oh, man, the offensive line can't block anybody. The offense, what's going on? If South Carolina finds a way to beat Arkansas, ain't nobody going to give a damn what it looked like when you beat Georgia State. All that's going to matter is, hey, the Gamecocks are 2-0, and and here comes the dogs coming to Willie B. So, um, you know, it's it's a great opportunity for this South Carolina football team and this program, and again, it'd be a massive win, and really, really excited to see what happens in Fayetteville at uh, noon Eastern on Saturday. He is uh, Chris Phillips. Catch him on the uh, Spurs Up show in the Daily Crow, and then you see the Twitter handle right there. Got to follow him on Twitter. Chris, appreciate you stopping by. It should be a good one on Saturday. Mark, always a pleasure, man. Anytime. Appreciate you. And what's going to be kind of odd is that uh, SEC fans, close your ears for a second, that uh, Cincinnati may actually have a faster defense than South Carolina. So the Hogs may have faced a faster defense uh, against a group of five team than they will in the SEC this week. But I want to get to, Ty, what's got to be the major concern here. So Spencer Radler comes to town. Uh, He's got to be a top 10 to 15 quarterback. Uh, Jaheim Bell, one of the best playmakers in the SEC. but and the defense showed some issues against Cincinnati. Uh, South Carolina didn't have the best performance against uh, Georgia State. They didn't break free in this game until the fourth quarter and break away. They had trouble rushing the football, two and a half yards per carry. Spencer Rattler threw a couple picks. But um, you're concerned about, of course, Jalen Catalan, him missing from uh, the second half of last week's game. So uh, concerns about the defense facing a capable offense coming in. Yeah, I mean, it's 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 one of those where you look at, and I have not had a chance. I've only caught glimpses of that South Carolina Georgia State game, uh, and only heard just you know a little bit here and there. Read some stuff on Twitter. Um, I understand that Rattler did not have a very good game. Couple picks, twenty. I think he threw the ball almost forty times. Completed like a little bit north of maybe fifty five percent or something, but uh, not a great QBR either. Uh, I, I don't. I just don't know what to expect in this one. I, I, of course, I don't want to give away my pick on who I think is going to win yet until Friday, but I do. It's hard to do this and not say that despite Catalan and by the way, Miles Slusher, two guys in the secondary being out, it's hard to not be a little bit concerned because you know, they're going to try and throw that ball. They're going to try and sling it. Like you said, the run game, not overly effective, uh, you know, they, I guess, struggled to get anything going really on offense and, until the, uh, I guess, until maybe the third quarter. But, I, yeah, this is this will be 
fascinating to see how they try to pick apart Arkansas secondary. Spencer Rattler, say what you want about him. We know he's a capable quarterback. So in, in Arkansas secondary performance, um, not great against Cincinnati. So really, what do we know about anybody right now, I guess, is the question. Not much. But uh, Arkansas cannot, in my opinion, and I do agree with you, Cincinnati is faster. I think they might even be better than South Carolina um, in certain areas. But uh, I, I just don't know what to expect just yet. I'm going to have to sit down, talk with some folks, watch watch, and, uh, watch the game, and and uh, kind of go down the rabbit hole, see what we got. But I, I, this, is, this is another tough one. I, 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 well, I should say it's, it's not a coin flip for me. I'll say that. It's not a coin flip game for me, a close 50-50 kind of game. But there are some matchups, as you mentioned, uh, that will be fascinating to see between Arkansas and South Carolina. Two of the emerging coaches uh, in the SEC as well. Shane Beamer did a great job with what he had coming yeah. in. Just, you know, you get thrown a roster. You pretty much don't have any of your own guys Ooh. that first year. And he pulled it together, won a bowl mm -hmm. game against North Carolina with four quarterbacks. And then Sam Pittman, we look back a couple of years, pretty much the same deal there. He was able to just be handed a roster and somehow make it a whole lot better on the scoreboard than the previous guy. So yeah. two really good coaches going at it. Yeah, not saying – I mean, yeah, all the love in the world for Sam Pittman, right? I mean, that's what the fans will tell you here. They love Sam Pittman, especially with what they had in Chad Morris. That is a uh, – it's not hard to – I think you could have brought in, I don't know, just about anybody, and they would have been thankful to move on from Chad Morris. But you're right, This what, what Sam inherited, it, it's amazing. I mean, we're sitting here talking about how they, they struggled and they still beat a capable, ranked Cincinnati football team. Two years ago, that was a pipe dream. You know, three years ago, that was a, what the hell are you talking about? You know, like, I, that's where we're at now. That's incredible. That is a, uh, that's just a, a tip of the cap to Sam Pittman's what that is. I mean, the job that he's done at Arkansas is incredible. I know you and I talk about that a lot, but it's, it is simply incredible that he, what he's been able to do. We'll see what happens from here on out. Um, we'll see what, you know, maybe they're better, a lot better than we think, which I think they're better than what we saw Saturday for sure. There's also the possibility that, you know, you've got some things you got to overcome and, and those could eventually catch up to you. Maybe they catch up to you against South Carolina. You know, maybe they catch up to you against A&M. Of course, you got Bama coming into town. You know, if you've got stuff going on, if you don't have it fixed by then, you're in real trouble uh, against someone like the Crimson Tide. But yeah, I mean, um, Arkansas is he's just such a perfect fit sam is and and uh, beamer's done a good job at south carolina you're right the 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 mess they inherited a quarterback a year ago i remember that just being an ongoing theme for them and uh they seem to think they have their guy in spencer rattler and uh, i guess we'll find out as the year unravels ty hudson hogville.net you can look it up right here on youtube as well for the video versions hogville right here on youtube ty appreciate you stopping by setting us up for a under the radar, big one uh, in the SEC. Whoever wins this one, I think, really takes a step into, okay, you got past another big hurdle, and uh, this may be a team to look out for in the SEC, uh, South Carolina at uh, Arkansas. Appreciate it, Ty. Hey, thanks for having me on, Mark.